Hey everyone, welcome to the video. Gene Perry here, and this is the first week I'll be doing Stick Tech, which is going to be similar to Song of the Week. However, I'll be focusing more specifically on the Chapman Stick, what makes it special. And this week I'm doing a little bit on Stick Enterprise's most recent addition to the Stick family, which is the Railboard. And here it is. Railboard R6260. This was pulled from Emmett's first production run of Blue Railboards. And you'll notice just to the right of the pad there that that fret is missing, and that's by design. You'll also notice that the fret dots aren't actually dots at all. They are inverted domes that have been carved into the fretboard. Something I didn't fully appreciate until I actually saw the instrument and held it in my hands. The stereo mono switch is at the base of the instrument as opposed to up on top. And uh, I'm quoting from Stick Enterprise's site now on stereo and mono operations. A trim pot on the bass side can be set with a screwdriver to reduce the mono bass volume until it balances with the melody. The mono output can be sent through either the tip or ring of the output jack or through both together simply by operating the volume knobs on each side, thus pinning the combined mono signal anywhere across the stereo field. With the bass volume turned off, the mono signal gets panned to the melody amp or channel. With the melody volume off, the mono panning is hard in the other direction, something very unique to this instrument and a real testament to Villex's uh, pursuit of a better pickup. You can also see at the base of the instrument there that little curvature just under uh, the bottom of the bridge there. Very impressive uh, and cool looking. You can also see the input light uh, that's right above the input jack there that activates when you're using the dual XLR outs. And look, there's a little space for you MIDI guys right there if you want to use a MIDI pickup. Here's the back of the rail board, and you can see the uh, injection molded half inch thick headstock, which is glass filled black plastic, bolted on pretty squarely in four places. Here is the four way divided truss, and you saw that there's a nut at the top of the instrument as well at the base of the, the fretboard there. And also, this angle kind of shows off how the R block kind of pontoons around the main structure of the instrument. This angle shows just how thin the instrument is at the base by the tailpiece. In this part of the video, I'm comparing a 10-string Legacy Polycarbonate uh, Chapman stick with that of the, the Railboard. So uh, this instrument is a 34-inch scale instrument, which means it measures from bridge screw to bridge screw 34 inches. Okay, that's the traditional length, 34-inch scale. But that wasn't entirely apparent to me, or it wasn't entirely apparent to me, how this instrument could be longer and still have the same scale. So, so why is that? Because when I measure the rail board, you see it comes in at 45 and 3 eighths inches, which is what, 2 and 3 quarters inches longer? About that. So how could that be? How come it's not the, the 36 inch scale that I have on my more kind of modern 10 string Chapman stick? I've lined up the, the tips of the headstocks, and so you can see outright that the railboard is clearly longer. So why are we back to a 34-inch scale? Why is that? I had to ponder that for a while, and I read about it, and I tried to understand it, and it wasn't until I put these instruments next to each other that I really started to understand why that might be. And as we move up towards closer towards the headstock, and we get it in focus, you'll see right there, that first position just to the right of the pad, that first fret is missing, that's by design, which means that two inch space that you used to have on that first fret, on the X fret, is now expanded to three and three quarters of an inch, which means you can get a nice, clear sound at that bridge position. Right? Now this instrument, the, the polycarb, is the same scale, but the difference is, obviously, the X fret, right? But you'll see that you don't have much space at that first position. But everything else, that is, the spacing on these frets relative to the railboard, they're the same. This one's just really dirty. Because the railboard is so thin, there's been a slight adjustment to the belt hook. And here's a 10 string belt hook, four elevations deep, more what you might be used to. But because of the thinness of the railboard, there's a small pedestal that's been added to the base of the belt hook. You can see it there, so that it projects out slightly from your body so it feels more like what you're used to and it's not too close. 
This part of the video is a little blurry, I apologize. I've got a 10 string Chapman stick here and it's about 7 eighths of an inch thick, right? And the back is beveled there, it's kind of what we're all used to. When we compare that with the rail board, the rail board is only 3 quarters of an inch thick, which is 1 eighth of an inch thinner. But perhaps the most compelling part of the feel of the instrument is that the back of the neck is scalloped. It's very thin towards the edges there. String spacing for the rail board is slightly wider than that of a 10 string. The distance in between each string is 315 hundredths of an inch. Okay. The distance in between the melody and bass side sets of strings is slightly wider, so that's 430 hundredths of an inch. One and a half. That's just not in focus, Gene. When we look at the rail board, we see that it's slightly wider. So the distance in between each string is increased to 34 hundredths of an inch, a difference of 25 hundredths of an inch. And the distance in between the melody and bass side sets of strings is increased to 47 hundredths of an inch. It's a little bit wider. I'm using some natural light here to illustrate the way the strings are worn. Um, as they're pushed up against the anodized aluminum fretboard. And on the lowest bass string there and on the highest melody side string, you can see some slight discoloration. And as I lift the lowest melody side string there, you might be able to see uh, some divots in where the string actually meets the fretboard. And in one location in particular, um, you can see where the string is actually kinked right there. And I slow down the video. Put my finger underneath it right there. Now I was pressing really hard right there. So I've had these strings for about a month. Okay. And as I slightly angle the string, you might also be able to see uh, the little divots that are apparent on the string um, as they are pressed up against the fretboard there, which is totally natural. Because of the hardness of the anodized aluminum fretboard, it's not uncommon to see some residual uh, stainless steel filaments from your string on the edges of your rail. If you apply a little pressure on the rail there, you'll see that that goes away. And to illustrate that again, I'm going to put my finger right above that fret and uh, give it a good rub, and you'll see that there are some markings there which can be removed by simply putting your finger above the fret and applying a little pressure. Magic bananas. Magic. All right, my final demonstration here, I cut a small orange in half. OK, actually what I'm doing here is I'm demonstrating the hardness of anodized aluminum. So I've got a stainless steel knife there that I'm banging on the back of my instrument with. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Is it leaving a mark? You tell me. I don't think it is. And I do it again just for good measure. Check it. All right, so listen, uh, this is the first week that I'm doing Stick Tech. Hope you guys are digging it. It's a little bit of a change from Song of the Week. Um, but I hope you like it. If you have any questions for me, uh, reach out to me at geneperry at gmail.com. You can also find me out there um, at thefreehandsacademy.com as well as on Facebook at facebook.com, Gene Perry Musician. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.